there's a first time for everything. Hi, this is Kim Newlove, host of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. And today's episode is about my 2022 press kit. Do you have a press kit? When you create and use a press kit, you tell the world what you want the world to know about you. During my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor, developing a press kit was a necessity. In this episode, I talk about what a press kit is, what's in my 2022 press kit, why do I have a press kit, when do I use it, where do I store it, how do I share it, how often do I update it, and who needs a press kit. I hope this episode gives you ideas for making your own press kit. Pharmacists don't like to promote themselves, am I right? But wouldn't you rather have a fast and easy way to communicate who you are to the world? I hope this episode inspires you to create your own press kit today. Okay, this is the first time I've ever used a video component for my podcast. And in order to do it, I am at my desk in my office without what I call my good microphone, which is what I usually use for solo shows. That's an Audio-Technica 2035 condenser microphone. Today, I'm using my Audio-Technica 2100 USB microphone, which usually I only use for podcast interviews here at the desk. Other than that, I'm somewhat distracted by having a computer screen in front of me. I usually have paper notes, but that's okay. I'm rolling with it. Today, I put together a few slides using canva.com, so you don't have to stare at my face for more than 15 minutes if you're watching this on YouTube. How do you find the video for this? Okay, you can find the video version of today's podcast on the Pharmacist Voice YouTube channel. Did you know I had a YouTube channel? The link is in the show notes. To access the show notes, by the way, go to thepharmacistvoice.com and click on the podcast tab. If you just want to search for my YouTube channel on YouTube, search for The Pharmacist Voice. And just to make it confusing, all of my podcast episodes are syndicated to my YouTube channel. So you can find the audio podcast and the video version of today's episode on The Pharmacist Voice YouTube channel. If you know a better way to do this, by the way, I'm all ears. <laughs> I am not a YouTuber yet. Uh, you'll need to look for the thumbnail for episode 140 with the red and white YouTube player image on it. The audio only podcast episodes have the episode artwork with an image of a pair of headphones on them. Now, when you go to the YouTube channel, if you haven't subscribed to it yet, please do that when you check out the video and thanks. All right. If you're new to the show, welcome. I am a pharmacist by training, but I made a career transition to voice actor and podcast host. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for women pharmacist authors, provide medical narration to clients in the pharmaceutical and biotech industries, and narrate content for explainer videos and e-learning projects. I was inspired by my nonverbal teenage son with autism to combine my background as a pharmacist with my speaking voice and launch my voiceover business, The Pharmacist's Voice, in 2017. My son, Craig, helped me realize the power of having a voice and using it. My solo podcast episodes are about some aspect of being a pharmacist, a voice actor, a pharmacist podcaster, or my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. My interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain so that you are inspired to use your voice too. This is episode 140, and you can find the show notes with links to anything mentioned today on my website, thepharmacistsvoice.com. You can also find my medical narration demo and a link to my online course, Pronounce Drug Names Like a Pro, on my website. That website, again, is thepharmacistsvoice.com. Let's dive in and talk about press kits. First of all, what is a press kit? A press kit can go by a number of different names. It can be called an online press kit, a media kit, 
a PR or professional relations or personal relations kit. It goes by a number of names. In this podcast episode, we're just going to call it a press kit. All right. A press kit, in my own words, is self-promotional materials. In my opinion, there is no exact formula. So I made up my own press kit. You can make up yours. But what you need to think about is what is in it for the person on the receiving end. Make sure you're giving the people who need to know about you and all of your stuff the things that they need. Make sure the what's in it for them is big. All right. And this is something completely selfish, but I'm going to throw this comment in anyways. When you make a press kit, you guide or control the narrative. You get to tell the world what you want them to know about you. So what's in my 2022 press kit? Three things, basically. My bio, some links, websites, and social media, and headshots or branding photos. There's many ways to call those. We'll get to that in a minute. The bio and links are going to be in some sort of a word processing document. I am a Mac user, so I use pages, but you could use Microsoft Word, convert things to a PDF, use Google Docs, whatever floats your boat, and headshots, you naturally store them on your computer or on an external hard drive or on the cloud. A little bit about bios. So bio, links, and headshots. We're going to talk about each of these. A bio is what you usually find in the about section of a website. My personal bio or something similar to my bio is on the about section of my, both of my websites. And you'll see in just a little bit what I'm talking about there. Uh, it's read prior to my public speaking appearances, including podcasts or video podcasts. And it's often included also in the show notes for whoever's interviewing me. Thank you to anyone who's ever had me on your podcast. It's always a pleasure, but my bio does change as time goes on. I've also got a bit of a bio on LinkedIn, like an about section, you know, and I also use it for, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and things like that, or even conference apps. Moving on. This is my bio. Okay. This is my current bio. <laughs> we'll talk about when do I update it a little bit later on, but I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. Kim Newlove is a pharmacist, voice actor, podcast host, wife, mom of two teenagers, and volunteer. She and her family live in the greater Toledo, Ohio area. Kim earned her Bachelor of Science degree in pharmacy from the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy in 2001 and is an Ohio pharmacist. She founded the Pharmacist Voice LLC in 2017 and launched the Pharmacist Voice podcast in 2019. Her website is thepharmacistvoice.com. Finding the right voice for an audio project is important. Kim brings her years of expertise as a pharmacist to her audiobook and voiceover projects. Her delivery style is confident and trustworthy. The Pharmacist Voice podcast is a weekly podcast. It's available at thepharmacistvoice.com and on all major podcast players. Kim's solo episodes are about some aspect of being a pharmacist, a voice actor, a pharmacist podcaster, or her career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. Interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain so that her listeners are inspired to use their voices too. In her spare time, Kim enjoys spending time with family, playing Ticket to Ride Switzerland, swimming, and riding her BMW motorbike. Now, that's the end of the bio. And just to let you know, this is approximately 200 words, and it can be shortened as needed. As for links, okay, we're on the second step of my 2022 press kit. Links are up to you. I don't know what kind of media you're on, but these are my links, just as an example. You don't have to do everything I do, but this is what I do. I have two websites. One is thepharmacistvoice.com. And I also have an online course, which you can find at kimnewlove.com. 
Just a little FYI on the pharmacistvoice.com. If you click on the store tab, it will take you to kimnewlove.com. My podcast, I usually draw attention to the fact that I have a podcast by putting the link from the pharmacist voice to my podcast. So I hope I said that right. <laughs> the pharmacistvoice.com forward slash podcast is technically the website for my podcast. So if I just have that on my links, whenever I've got some sort of public appearance and it ends up in the show notes, people say, oh, hey, she's got a podcast and they can click the link and go to it. Instead of trying to look me up on one of those podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, et cetera, those can be kind of hard to navigate, just my opinion. I also have links to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and my ACX narrator profile. And if you don't know what ACX is, it's the audiobook creation exchange, and it connects authors who write the books, of course, with narrators like me. It's kind of like a matchmaking service. Just one other thing about ACX, my narrator profile, it's got a lot of samples of me narrating audiobooks, chapters of audiobooks. I have probably narrated Oh, probably 30 or more individual chapters of audiobooks outside of what I've gotten paid to produce. And I think there's six samples on that site. If you want to hear what my voice sounds like narrating things that are not medical, that is something you can check out. Now, one thing that I did not put in my links is my email address. This is optional. Whenever I put my email address out into the world in show notes, I fear that it will be used for spam. So I prefer to tell people about my website and tell them to use my contact form because I don't want bots finding my email address and sending me junk, which already happens. Enough about links, we're moving on to headshots. Headshots are the wild, wild west. You can do whatever you want. And I tell you, I've gotten all kinds of headshots in my day. Some people call them branding photos because they are what I want people to see me as. I want the world to see me as both a pharmacist and a voice actor. So sometimes I will be in scrubs with a lab coat in my headshots. Sometimes I will have headphones on or there will be a microphone in the picture. Sometimes I will be dressed in just business casual. Maybe I'll have a pretty dress on and a jacket. That's up to you. I think some of the the variety that I've gotten over the years has been kind of fun. For example, in the YouTube video, you're going to see some pictures of me throughout the years. And I have got different hairstyles, hair colors, clothing styles, <laughs> different equipment. Um, it's up to you what you do, but I do recommend you go to a professional. I, I know that you could have someone take a picture of you with your iPhone and the resolution's pretty good but I would recommend that you go to a photographer, you plan what you're going to wear, perhaps get your hair done, um, pick out your clothes ahead of time, maybe have a stylist help you keep the jewelry to a minimum. We're actually going to have a whole podcast episode about headshots and what to wear and makeup and everything in July, because I'm going to have a whole series on beauty and pharmacists who are in the beauty space. And my photographer God willing, will be on the podcast too. I've invited him to be on there to talk about headshots, what to wear and all that good stuff. What you get out of it, okay, is high resolution photographs. And those can easily be uploaded to websites or social media or given to somebody else for promotional material. One thing I would highly recommend, keep it legal here, get a release from your photographer that is what I do. It's a legal release and it legally allows me to use photographs taken by somebody else for my own purposes on my website, on social media. If I wanted to put it on a coffee cup and give it out as uh, a freebie, you know, whatever you want to do, just make sure you have legal permission because it's the right thing to do. All right, next, why do I even have a press kit? for a lot of reasons. I think I've talked about a few of them already, but I want to be able to 
hit the easy button. Honestly, it's an easy way to, and convenient way to communicate information. So if I'm being asked to do some public speaking or be on a podcast or a video podcast, or join an online platform, like a conference app, then I'm able to easily just consistently give them the same information that's, or about the same information that's on my website and the same picture that I'm presently using. And the headshot can be used across all platforms, website, social media, anything, okay? Now, when you have a press kit, it shows that you're serious about your career, okay? It shows you're organized. You're anticipating that you're so successful that other people are going to want to know about you. I know that pharmacists are not comfortable with self-promotion But in my own words, I think it is necessary these days to have some sort of a press kit. It really makes a good impression on others too. All right, when do I use my press kit? For interviews, I think I've already talked about that. People will use my bio as an intro. They'll put it in the show notes and so on. As we've talked about, it can be used prior to public speaking engagements Uh, intake forms online. That's another reason. So social media, I have only joined, let's see, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and rphally.com. If you're not on that and you're a pharmacist, check out rphally. And I just like to have something consistent on each of those platforms that tells people who I am. So the bio, the links, the headshot, they're all pretty much the same across all platforms. And I already mentioned real briefly conference apps. Conference apps are something that not every conference uses, but my experience going to the annual meeting of the Ohio Pharmacists Association is such that there is a conference app and I want the same picture that's on my LinkedIn profile to also be on that conference app. And then if they want me to put in my social media links or a brief bio, I've got it all ready to go. I don't have to think about it. Where do I store my press kit? I store my press kit on my computer. I also have it on a few different hard drives, portable hard drives like flash drives. And I store it on Google Drive and Dropbox because leading into the next topic, how do I share it? I share it via Google Drive and Dropbox. Uh, Sometimes people ask me to email it. They want the bio and the links in a PDF form, and then they want the images However, they can get them via email. Sometimes I have to shrink them because they are ginormous. Sharing images via Google Drive and Dropbox kind of works out better because there are limits on the size of things that you can send via email these days. And you can just email a link to that folder on Dropbox or Google Drive. And I've also filled out intake forms before using the stuff from my press kit. Some intake forms for podcasts, for example, require me to upload the image to their website and then just copy and paste my bio into a box and copy and paste all my links into a box. It's very convenient and just having it all in one page, I'm sure you can imagine, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but it just makes it really easy. It's like hitting the easy button. Now, how often do I update my press kit? Anytime something changes, to be honest, updating the press kit is important. For example, if I receive a major award and I want to include that in my bio, I would do that. If I earned an extra title, I'm only a BS farm, okay? And I'm a fully, I am a fully qualified pharmacist. But if I earned a farm D, I would certainly update my bio. If there's a student listening to this, Someday you will graduate (laughs) and congratulations when you do, but when you do, you want to change your title. So instead of being, you know, PharmD candidate 2023, it's, you know, Jane Smith PharmD and congratulations to you when that happens. Now you want to update your bio anytime you enter a new online platform and really you should be updating your bio in any of the platforms, especially LinkedIn, anytime you join one, because again, you get to control the the narrative. You get to control the narrative. What you put out into the world is what's on all these social media platforms. So make sure that you are representing yourself well. 
And also I update my press kit whenever I get new branding pictures or headshots, which last time I did get new headshots was in November, 2021. And it probably won't get new ones until November, 2022. Who needs a press kit anyway? Okay, here's a great question. I think this is my opinion, any professional needs a press kit. For example, if you have a website, I think you need a press kit. You need to be able to put out into the world your bio, your social media links, and what you look like. That's just my opinion. So that's what I do. Who else needs a press kit? Public speakers, for sure. If you're going to get introduced, you want to be able to put out into the world what you want people to know about you prior to you stepping on the stage. It's kind of like being able to like prime people like, oh, okay, who is this person? Why do I care what she has to say? It's already been established because your bio has been read prior to you speaking. Social media users, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but social media users should have some sort of a, a press kit or a, a bio at minimum. Podcast guests, whether they're audio or video, should definitely have a press kit. And I think I mentioned this a couple times earlier, conference app users. These are all people who need a press kit, in my opinion. All right, now let's wrap this up. Today, we talked about press kits. We talked about what a press kit is, what's in my press kit, why do I have one, when do I use it, where do I store it, how do I share it, how often do I update it, and who needs a press kit. I hope this has given you some ideas for making your own press kit. And in the future, I may do an episode about my corporate press kit, or the press pages for my websites, but I would have to create them first. Honestly, I have not done that yet. Hashtag 2023 goals, right? Anyways, thank you for listening to or watching episode 140 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. I'll have links to my YouTube channel, Dropbox, Google Drive, my website, my online course, my social media links, and Ticket to Ride, of course, in the show notes. I love that game. If you know someone who would like this episode or needs to hear it, please share it with them and subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Thanks for joining me today.